what's good? I'm back. Triple P, Paul Picker Podcast, a.k.a. the Common Sense Podcast. Your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much more. I'm your host, the one and only Paul Pickett. Um, today, I'm going to react to Andrew Tate explains why men have become cowards. But before we do, let's give you a word from Promo Palace. Are you a musician looking for music marketing and promotion? Then look no further than Promo Palace LLC, your one-stop shop for all music promotion services. Services include Spotify playlist pitching, YouTube video promotion, record pool promotion, blog placements, radio airplay promotion, SoundCloud promotion, and much more. With over 2,000 customers and over 10 years of experience in online promotion, Promo Palace LLC is a company you can trust. For more info, please go to promopalace.biz. See you there. That's right. You heard the beautiful lady. If you need online market promotions for your music, product, brand, or your service, please go to promopalace.biz. One-stop shop. Pretty much the octopus of market and promotions. Got our hands in everything. Um, so... Let's get into it. Andrew Tate explains why men have become cowards. Um, a lot of men have been cowards anyways, but let's get into it. Problem. The world is, is full of cowards. We suffer from a pandemic of cowardice. We've never suffered from any other pandemic in the last three years. People are absolutely not really cowards, and they do to me what they did to me to scare people. Mm. If you tell the average person, you're going to lose contact with basically everyone you can speak to. You're not going to have a voice anymore. You're not going to have a bank account. You're not going to be able to make money online. You're not going to be able to move anywhere. You're not going to be able to transact. We're going to wreck you head to toe. The average person can't deal with that, right? On top of the fa that, the fact that the average person is employed and they're scared of losing their job, scared of their employer. I'm in a unique situation because I'm extremely difficult to hurt. But the average person, as soon as you hurt their money, their life is over, right? And, and that's what we've got. We've got to a, a level of cowardice amongst the population where people are just going to sit there and ignore objective reality because they're scared of having this cancellation weapon used against them. So, yeah, it's you're right. It's not that people don't agree with us. It's not that we're not saying the things that everyone knows are intrinsically true. It's that everybody is afraid to say it. And that can only end when everybody yep. stands up. And stops agreeing and playing this game. It stops being cowards. We need mass numbers of people to say, no, I'm allowed an opinion. Mm -hmm. You know what? Nigel Farage, and I don't, I'm not, since UKIP ended, I don't even know about his politics nowadays. I don't even know what he's doing. But he said something that was really interesting. He was asked about who runs the world. And I guess the person was trying to set him up for a question about the elites. And he said, truthfully, I'll tell you who runs the world. We do. Because we decide how much of this crap we're going to put up with. The problem is we're putting up with too much of it. Problem is, everyone's a coward. And and you're right. I get the same thing. Wow, thanks for saying it. Why don't you say it? And and everyone is just terrified. And uh, it's, it really is truly crazy because fear has always been the control mechanism of man. The yep. worst things that have ever happened in any society or any civilization since the dawn of fucking records has been done under the name of fear. Get the population yep. afraid. What did Goebbels say? The propaganda minister of the Third Reich. Once people are afraid, give them a common enemy. They'll do anything you want. That's the, the, the Nazis knew this. Everyone knows this, right? So it's a basic playbook. But I think Fear it's also mongers. a larger issue. I think that things like keeping sure, making sure people are semi-depressed, making sure people are divided, making sure people are selfish, making sure people are self-obsessed, they're trying to destroy people's will to stand up and, and care about anyone other than themselves. And once you do that, Couple in with the fact that if you start to care about others and genuinely care about the world, you'll ruin your own life. Mm -hmm. It just makes people shut up. Yeah. Um, yeah, let me tap into what he said so far. Um, they do try to control you with fear. People are definitely walking on eggshells. Um, more scared than ever. Um, like YouTubers, like, got to watch what they say because... Um, they'll remove your video for misinformation. And we know the two main subjects that they, you know, label misinformation. Um, I think a lot of people in society have always been cowards. You know, I'm a laws of nature guy. So I think about most animals 
are like exactly alike in the laws of nature. Like every single honey badger, for example, is fearless. Every single honey badger is fearless. And that's part of their DNA. It's part of being a honey badger. It, it's part of their laws of nature. Every single human is not fearless. Every single person is not fearless. Um, yes, I agree with him on this. Like, I experienced where PayPal, like, basically suspended um, one of my PayPals and held, like, $2,000 for, like, six months because um, the marketing promotions that I do are not covered under their terms of service and things of that nature. So they basically kicked a lot of uh, music promo companies off of PayPal which ended up doing me a favor in the long run because PayPal also came out with that uh, e email about finding people for misinformation as well. Um, so, yeah, and I didn't really, like, panic and freak out. I just said I have to find other options. So now, like, I mainly used to use PayPal for payments. Now it's Square. It's Cash App. It's Venmo, it's Zelle, and Amazon Pay, you know. So, and I'm going to get me an iPhone so I can have Apple Pay and add that to my website as well. You know, like, and even if Square was to, like, screw me over like PayPal did, you know, I would just tell my clients, I right, you can only order on my website with Amazon Pay, Cash App, Zelle. It's still four other options, you know. And if they're not willing to use those options, then I can't help them, you know. But uh, let's hear what else you got to say. And it, it's so interesting you say that because something that is not often discussed or analyzed, right. one of be. the strangest things I've seen in the conversation around you and your meteoric rise in fame and popularity this year is – not a lot of people are thinking, okay, well, for that to happen, he's got to be saying some real stuff, right? Like people are, you don't grow by hundreds of thousands of followers per day. Like I was, I've been, obviously I've been following you for years, but I think at the beginning of the year, did you have a, maybe half a million Instagram followers? Yeah. And by the time they took you off, you had about what, 5.7, 5.8 million. Great point. Let me, let me chime in. I don't care what kind of rhetoric you're spewing on the internet. You don't go from half a million to five million in a year. You know, it's like a snap of the fingers, 365 days without there being a bunch of people that agree with your rhetoric, agree with what you have to say. You know, like Kevin Samuels before he passed. Yeah, there was a lot of women that went in on them, you know. Um, I'm pretty sure most of the dudes agree with him. And Kevin Samuel started with going in on dudes at first. And then when he really got super popular, he was going in on the women. But these women were calling up and asking, you know, these questions and asking his honest opinion, you know. And that's the thing. People act like honesty is supposed to be said in such a nice manner all the time. No, sometimes the truth is ugly, and sometimes the truth hurts. Let's keep it moving. This is in the space of a few months. So even oh, when few I was months, talking to people yet. who you know say say they don't like you or they're like, I'm like, look, even if you don't like the message, you don't agree with it. Rather than just, why don't you think about okay, what is it? What's happening that in the you don't world? like? And what is it that this man is saying that this is resonating with so many, How many people, people to such a strong degree? And it seems like people wanted to, to just skip over that and go, ah, oh, but he, he. These people can't think. These people cannot think. Not it's, for themselves. It's almost a sad realization when you wake up and understand that there's a large contingent of the world who cannot think. And when I say that, I don't mean that in some kind of you know, semi-sarcastic -sarc or, I mean that literally. Yeah. There are people who have a strong emotional re reaction to subjects they completely don't understand. 
There are people out there who will stand up and yep. say, I hate Andrew Tate. Why? I hate him. He needs to go to jail. Because everybody else hates okay, him. Why? Because everybody else hates him. him. Why? They don't know why. They once you once the matrix can program an emotional response into you and you can't even logically with your own words explain why you have that emotional emotional response you're completely a slave mind these people don't think about anything they believe what they're told to believe they're emotional about what they're told to be emotional about in the exact direction they're told to be and that's what the matrix wants it wants to be able to say a name and tell the world to hate them without even giving a reason and just get what they want these people are so far gone these individuals who do not be, they cannot logically explain their own emotions are so far gone. It's ridiculous. As, as an adult, what you need to do is, is seriously analyze every strongly held belief you currently have and work out where it came from. Is it personal experience? Is it from somebody who I care about and who I trust? Is it from what the news has said? Why do I believe this so much? Why do I have an emotional response to this? Where did it come from? People don't do that. They just sit there, watch the news, watch social media. I'm supposed to hate this guy, so I now hate this guy. So I know yep. exactly what you're talking about, Zuby, because you're right. These people cannot think. They cannot even give a reason. There's a guy on TikTok who walks around and says, have you heard of Andrew Tate around college campuses? And people go, yeah. And he goes, do you like him? And they go, no. Why? He's a misogynist. What's misogynist mean? And then they can't answer. They don't know what it is. They don't even know what it means. Like it's, it's, it's almost sad, but then you live through the last three years and you realize that, yeah, people can't think there's a large contingent of the world that truly cannot think. It's scary. Yeah, it is kind of scary. I mean, it's, it's so interesting because as someone, as someone who knows you and <laughs> privately and publicly, I've, I've defended you a lot, a lot this year because people have been saying super wild stuff and, yeah. you know, people don't, I posted actually when. When, when were we in Romania? 2020. Yeah. I posted, um, it was while they were in the process of. You know, let me chime in. Zuby says something about, about people posting stuff about Andrew Tate. I guarantee the things that people were posting about Andrew Tate were far more heinous than the things Andrew Tate says. You know, I've. It, we're at this very, very dangerous, dark, scary place where it's almost illegal to speak truth and facts. It's almost criminal to speak truth and facts. Um, if it becomes criminal to speak truth and facts then I'll just have to become a career fucking criminal. Um, Because the number one thing I value in my friendships is honesty and truth. Let me repeat. The number one thing I value in my friendships is honesty and truth. And same thing with family, but family can't be honest and truthful with you, you know? So yeah, people will become cowards. They're walking on eggshells. They don't want to lose their contracts. Um, they don't want to get fired because these businesses are taking political stances. And most of these businesses are really taking these democratic and left liberal stances. You don't see a lot of businesses taking conservative Republican commercial ideology stances. You don't see it. I, I can't. I haven't. I've never seen it. I've never ever seen a business take this stance that, oh, we're just Republicans and conservatives and, you know, screw Democrats. But that's what a lot of these businesses are doing. They're all taking the same political stance, which means you're alienating half your customer base. As a marketing and advertising guy, it is the worst business strategy ever. And if they all lose money and customers because of it, you did it to yourself. You're dumber than a bag of bricks. Businesses are not supposed to take political stances. You're not supposed to side one way or another. You're not supposed to show a 100% bias on one political side over the other. 
You're not supposed to do that as a business. A business is supposed to only take the stance of we want to make money. You shouldn't care if they're Christians or Muslims, Democrats or Republicans, Jews, black, white, Hispanic, Asian. You shouldn't fucking care, but these businesses, they do. So once again, thank you for tuning in. Paul Pickett Podcast. And I'm out.